Gandhi said, your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. So through a series of, of six you know, chain reactions, your beliefs end up in your destiny, but right in the middle are your thoughts, your words, your actions. When I start to unpack this for myself and for my clients, anyone who might be really stuck in the doing this, stuck in feeling burned out, I bring us to center on, okay, let's listen to what we're saying, both to ourselves and then outwardly. And so, for example, I hear a lot of people say things like, I have to, and they rattle off a whole list of things they have to do professionally and personally. And it is you know, all the, all the things from changing your cat litter to grocery shopping, to sending the report to all of it. And it feels heavy. There's a heavy energy to it. And there's also like some rigidity that I experience in myself and others. And when we move through a process of shifting our language and perhaps instead of saying, I have to saying, I choose to change the cat litter, grocery shop, send the report. And then you can even up level up one more time and say, I get to. And what happens when I say, I get to change the cat litter, I get to create the report. I get to, you know, create the presentation. It's almost, it creates this levity and gratitude and it moves our energy level and it moves us up the ladder. And so we're using our words to shift ourselves up, which I believe shifts us away from any extreme of the pendulum, right? And we're just, we're coming into this space where, where our words are causing us to slow down, to breathe, to choose, to act. I like that. I like it a lot. I mean, my, my habit is to say, I need to. So I'm just fantasizing what it would be like to say, I get to, just to change that. You know, next I get to interview Krista. Next yeah. I get to work on the schedule for the summit next I get to yeah I like that and then so then just your then, face your yeah. face is like lit up right, right like I, I right. feel it I see it yeah and then 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 I guess I would just like as I got comfortable with that then I could maybe start to put in the language of I choose to mm -hmm. um, yes that's and nice. I'll just I want to give the warning it's going to feel awkward. I, I often will invite people to do this little exercise where you hold your hands with your palms apart, about a foot apart, and you bring them together and you clasp. And you do that about a dozen times, just quickly, just quickly. And on the last one, leave your palms collapsed together. And, and I'll ask you, Cynthia, where's your left thumb? Is it on top or on bottom? Oh, it's definitely on top. It's on top. Okay. So this time, as you open and close your hands, put your thumb, your left thumb on the bottom. How's that feel? Uh, weird. And that's yeah. a building Christ person who has done this thousands of times. It's still, right. feels weird. yeah, it's awkward. And what I've come to, for a long time in life, I was saying I'm uncomfortable. And what I was doing, I was tricking myself and I was keeping myself in the comfort zone of life. I, I'm not uncomfortable at all, much like this little exercise, it's simply unfamiliar. And so it's the rigor of language that we get to show up and say, okay, you know what? It's going to be a little unfamiliar when I start saying to other people and to myself, I get to, I choose to, and it's okay. Okay.